God bless you, family of God. You are strong. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. Today is Friday, so we're preparing for the weekend. And guess what? We're talking about health and wealth, spiritual health and wealth. And not only that, we're talking about the strength that God puts in you and puts in me when you put your hope, faith, and trust in Him. You are strong. I could guarantee it. You are strong. God made you for that. God made you for this. God made you for that issue. God made you to pass that test. God made you to go through that storm. God made you for this. You are strong. I woke up with the strength that God has placed in me, has placed in me um, through the prophet Jeremiah when he was speaking um, through the prophet in chapter 1, verses 17 to 19. That's where we're going to be in on this morning Devo. So bless you. If this is the first time hanging out with me on the morning Devos, my name is Sam Lopez. And I do these morning devos Mondays through Fridays, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Why? Because I believe the first thing is the first thing. And when you put whatever you put first in your life, um, that's what you worship. Amen. Or that's who you worship. So I put God first in my life because that's who I worship. I don't worship a statue. I don't worship an idol. I don't worship uh, a ministry, a minister. I don't worship myself. I don't worship my marriage. I don't worship my children. I worship God the creator of heaven and earth, the one who gave me and gave you the strength, to get, who gave you the health to gain wealth, to, who gave you everything that's needed to need, live out this life today. That's who I worship. Amen. So that's why I do these morning devos. Plus, years ago, God had confronted me and asked me the questions, why don't you get with me in the morning anymore? Why don't you devote your time in the morning to me anymore? Because I always used to do that when I first got saved. The first two, three years, devote time to the Lord first thing in the day. And then I stopped for whatever reason, you know, life, or maybe I thought I had enough of that, or maybe I thought I was somewhere in a position that I didn't have to do that no more. And then when he asked me that question years ago, I was like, um, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I have no, I have no excuse. Amen. <clears throat> so I started doing it again and it has blessed my life and I hope it blesses you if this is your first time. If you're listening from the podcast, God bless you. Welcome back um, to the audio version of the Morning Devo. Very powerful to have you with me and I'm honored that you're with me. Good morning, Sister Maya. So God bless you. You are strong. So let's talk about this whole concept of what God is speaking to his people about when it comes to God is in your corner. Why? Because if God be for you, who could be against you? What could be against you? What could happen to you other than God not knowing, not knowing? Like God knows everything that happens to me and everything that happens to you, good or bad. You might be saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, time out. Why would God allow anything bad to happen in my life? Well, for the first and foremost, God's a just God. So the reason why bad things are happening right now in our lives and in this world is because We, mankind, the representatives of of mankind, Adam and Eve, disobeyed God. So God being a just God, there had to be some kind of consequence for disobedience. But because he's a God of grace, he did not annihilate mankind. We're still here, right? He just kind of like threw us out the garden, threw Adam and Eve out the garden, the perfect environment, right? And then he also had a redemption plan, a plan to get that back, plan to get that perfect garden back. So the redemptive part was Jesus, the Christ, amen, our Lord and our Savior, amen. So we have paradise lost in Genesis and paradise um, regained in the book of Revelation. So God does have a plan, a redemptive plan all through the scriptures. But why would God do that if he already knew, he already knew that they was going to disobey whatever. He, God is a God of love, right? And God loves us so much that he gives us the choice. He doesn't want to force people to believe and to love in him or trust him or worship him. He wants us to choose him. Amen. That's why the Bible says he's a jealous God. If you choose an idol or another God, another deity before him, amen, then that's our choice. He's not going to force us, amen, but he offers us heaven. He offers us life, eternal life, love, abundance, and he gives us the strength. Because that's why we could make the statement that we are strong. That's why I could say you are strong because we're created in the image of the most powerful being of all history. The creator God. Amen. Yahweh. Elohim. El Shaddai. Amen. Um, the God the, the, the God on high. Great I am. He, him. Yeshua HaMashiach. He, him. The strength that no one is stronger than our God. And then he's calling us strong because he fights for us and God is in our corner. 
So I'm excited about this morning, Devo. I'm excited that you're here. Amen. Um, sometimes we need to hear these things. This is not a pep rally. It's not a pep talk. This is the word of God speaking to us in our situation right now. Amen. Who doesn't need the power of God? Who doesn't need the strength of God? Who doesn't need to be reminded that God is in your corner? So when do you need God to fight for you most? When? Right now, I need God every day to fight for me. Amen. I'm not going to just sit on a sofa somewhere and cry and, you know, complain. I'm going to fight the good fight of faith as well as God fighting for me. Amen. Why? Because he's a just God, a loving God, a holy God, a righteous God. Amen. And what would God not do for his children? He already demonstrated his own love in this, that while we were still hating on him, that while I was a hater of a God, a sinner, he still died for me. So we are valued. God put value. He put his blood on it. He put his life on it because you are strong and I am strong and we are worth it. Amen. According to the scriptures, we are worth it. Amen. Every second, Brenda Robinson said, God bless you, sister. Welcome to the morning Devo. Every second she needs God to fight for her. Amen. And if you haven't noticed, ladies and gentlemen, we are in a, a tough situation in this world, in this life. It's more than what you see. It's a spiritual warfare going on for every single soul right now. Every time I come on here, it's a war. So I put on the full armor of God, knowing very well, not dumb, that the enemy would try to snatch this word out of the people's hearts that are seeking truth. Now, the people who are seeking happiness, they can find that through Oprah Winfrey or whoever they watch. But when people want truth and they want true joy, they're going to find Jesus because God is the only way through Jesus the only truth through Jesus and the only life through Jesus. Amen. So they got to find what they're looking for. If you honestly are seeking truth, you will find Jesus. Amen. So let's get into it. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, now's the time to do it. Don't hesitate. And if you're watching at any point when something comes up to your mind, amen, just put it on the live chat. If you want something to be expressed, you want to express something and you don't want everybody to see it and you want it to be private, you could always inbox me on the social medias or you could always email me at djsamrock at soulwinnerswithaz.org. Amen. And you could keep things private. You say, just put, listen, I don't want nobody to know this is between me and you, between us and God. You don't want this to be public. I respect people's privacy. Trust me. Amen. Live.soulwinnerswithaz.org. Also, if you want to get out of the social media um, and go to a site that's less distraction, um, that's where it's at. Live.soulwinnerswithaz.org. That's where it's at. Amen. And there, you all you have to do is sign up. It takes less than 40 seconds. Give me a nice picture of yourself if you want. Uh, the name that you want to be addressed as and your best email so I could get connected with you and send you some free gifts via email. Amen. And some extra stuff other than what you see and hear on these morning devos. So I'm glad you're here. Let's pray. Amen. And then after we pray, 60 seconds, that's all, 60 seconds for you to help me break the algorithm of my shadow ban. And you can share this to people. I'm also streaming on YouTube as well. DJ Sam Rock is the name of my YouTube channel. I'm trying to make everything so simple for you to remember. Amen. And you can share the YouTube. You can share um, the Facebook pages. You can share... Um, live.soulwinnerswithaz.org also to someone right now amen just help me break the algorithm because the shadow ban on social media for ministers of the gospel is true it's real and if you touch on certain topics you actually get deleted and the post will get deleted if you don't believe me um, I don't suggest you try it out just trust me on it I know for sure uh, I've been banned and I've been deleted so many times that it's it's not funny but I believe that God will get this message to the people that he wants to get this message to, regardless of who's controlling, um, who's the social media police. He knows who he wants this message to get to, and he will get this message to those who are willing to listen to what his word is saying. So we'll be in Jeremiah chapter 1, 17 to 19. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for every single person right now that is coming online, that is joining us now, that will connect later on via live stream or podcast. I thank you for their lives, Lord God. They are made wonderfully, wonderfully and fearfully they are made. They are strong individuals. Father God, remind us that you are in our corner. Remind us that you fight the good fight of faith with us and you are for us and you demonstrated your love 
and you value us so much that you sent your very best, your very, very self in the form of a man named Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, for every single day that you allow us to breathe, every single day that you allow us to speak truth, every single day that you allow us to receive correction, every single day that you allow us to fellowship to one another, every single day that you allow us to pass someone who is without hope, who is without love, who has not been shown grace or mercy, that we can be used and that we are the light of this world and that we are the salt of this earth and that we have whatever it takes, whatever is necessary, to live this life out and to fight the good fight of faith. I thank you for the health, the strength, and the protection that you provide daily to all those who are in your kingdom and all those who are seeking you, Lord God, that you reveal yourself to those who are seeking truth. Reveal yourself, Lord Jesus. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for inspiring me and waking me up um, to preach and to reach, to evangelize those who are willing to listen, those who are willing to watch, and those who are willing to repeat the word of God over their own lives and their own situations right now. In the name of Jesus, I pray this by faith. Amen and amen. 60 seconds when we come back. Jeremiah chapter 1, 17 and 19. Let's see what the prophet is saying. Let's see what God spoke through the prophet. And let's see how we could apply what the prophet spoke. How we could apply that into our lives, right? We need this. I need it. I'll be right back. me sleeping right there man that's 60 seconds those 60 seconds are very fast amen so hopefully i shared it out to the groups and the pages and the people um, that i want to share it on the 60 seconds amen i'm gonna trust god for the rest and you could continue to share this out while we go amen whether you're with me right here on the social media or you're with me at live that's so wins with a z.org again i welcome you all so god is in your corner jeremiah ch- chapter 1 verse 17 to 19 the bible says the prophet says Get up, get up and prepare for action. Get out and tell everything I tell you to say. Wow, get up. Some people right now are in positions that they're not getting up anymore. They're tired. I get it. I understand it. Sometimes I don't want to get up either. Um, But God spoke to the prophet. He continues to speak to prophets telling us to get up. It's no time to stay um, idle, no time to stay asleep. No, t- it's time to get up, prepare for action, get out and tell them everything I tell you to say. Amen. And that's a trust issue when we're hearing God speaking and He wants us to speak what He's telling us to say. That's a trust issue. Amen. If you're not doing it, do not be afraid of them, or I will make you look foolish in front of them. Amen. Boldness. For see, Today, today, come on family, today I have made you strong like a fortified city that cannot be captured. You are made strong. And if you don't know that, if you didn't know that yesterday, if you weren't thinking about it tomorrow, the Bible says today, the prophet is saying today, I have made you strong like a fortified city that cannot be captured, like an iron pillar or a bronze wall. And this is where you should look at yourself in the mirror when you read the scripture. It says, you, point at yourself, you will stand against the whole land, the kings, officials, priests, and people of Judah. They will fight you, but they will fail. How many people know that we're in a battle and weapons are being forged against us, but those weapons and those people will fail 
because God is in our corner and God says we are strong. They will fight you, but they will fail for I am with you. God is with you. God is with me. And I will take care of you. Cast all your cares on the Lord. Why? Because he cares for us. I, the Lord, have spoken. Exclamation point. Period. Like God spoke it. It's established. It's a real situation now. Amen. Um, the enemy is already warned. The enemy is already defeated. So why would any believer in God walk around defeated? We are not defeated. We are victorious. Yes, I'm telling you, yes, of course, we go through things. Why wouldn't we? Aren't we in the same world, broken, fallen nature of man and sinful nature and fighting our own flesh? Aren't we in the same condition? But are we not in the kingdom of God? Are we in the kingdom of God or not? Do we believe in Jesus or not? Are you saved or not? Do you believe in the scripture or not? Are you the light and salt of the earth or not? I'm not going to repeat anything over my life. I'm not going to say anything over your life that is outside of the word of God. If you're outside of the kingdom um, because you haven't met the Lord, you haven't put your faith, hope and trust in him. You have your reasons, you have your excuses and you're acting like you have another day to make your decision. I'm telling you today, inspired by Holy Spirit, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that God wants to let you know that you are strong, that you are valued, that you are above, not below, that you are king, priest, and prophet of your home. If you're a man of God, wake up, he says, get up and prepare for action. Things are happening, whether whether or not you believe in God or not, whether you believe in spiritual things or not, things are still happening. God is still God. He's still seated on the throne and time is flying by. And you might be a person going around saying, oh, I'll do that next week, next year, or when I get to the to Sam's age, the old guy, right? When I get Sam's age, I'll take God seriously. As if you know the future, as if you know that being young doesn't guarantee of getting old. Did you know that? Just because you're young doesn't guarantee that you're going to be old. Just because you're in your teens doesn't mean that you're going to be into young adulthood. Today is the day. God urges us every time you read a scripture that a prophet is speaking, he's speaking about that day, that time. Sometimes you'll speak about something that will happen next year or something that will happen 70, 80 years later. But for the most part, when you look at the prophets and when you see how God spoke to the prophets, he's urging people. It's urgent. He's warning people. It's now. It's today. Change. Transform. Repent. Turn from your wicked ways and turn to the righteousness of God. Read the scriptures. Most of the times the prophet will speak of things that are to come or to speak of things that's going to happen if we deny or if we wanted to go our own way. And then the prophet was like, okay, I'm offering you life and you're choosing death. That's on you. But those who will, are willing to listen to the prophet, to the word of God, to the, what's going on in the spirit of God, amen, those people who listen, they can testify. I can testify and let you know that when we listen to God, when we perform God's word in our own lives, when we apply God's word in our own lives, his word comes to pass swiftly, right? Powerfully. It gives us the strength to get done whatever he calls us to get done. I'm telling you, God called you to do something amazing, right? And you're like, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't have finances. I don't have the people. I don't have the backing. Nobody likes me. But you know in your soul, you know in your spirit that God called you to do it, do it anyway, regardless. Be stubborn with the word. Don't let it go. Amen? When I was in the world, you and you asked me to do something, even if I didn't think I could do it, I'll do it anyway. Why? Because I was trying to prove to people that I could do whatever they asked of me. Why would I stop now when I'm in the kingdom of God? If God asks me to do something... Uh, I'm going to let God know I'm here. I'm, I'm for you. I don't get this right all the time. I'm not saying that every time God asks me to do something that I'm OK, let's go. Um, I think a little bit too much as I get older about, you know, what will people think as if that's a thing. Right. People think I'm crazy anyway. So I might as well go all out crazy for the Lord Jesus. Go all out crazy for Elohim, Yahweh, God to go all out for what the scripture says over my life and over your life. And to just reach as many people as I can during my lifetime here with the gospel message of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, with the word of God and challenge and encourage, right? And build up, not destroy. And if something needs to be destroyed, destroyed, it's the strongholds that we're under, that some people are still under strongholds. They're living uh, uh, some kind of like double life, one foot in the church, one foot in the world. Amen. And if you look at that, if you look at that picture in your mind, say that we're being split in half, uh, 
half person cannot live a whole life. Amen. So choose a side. Be all in or all out. You know, I respect people that say, you know what? I don't want no parts of the Lord. I don't want no more, no more hearts of church. You know, I respect them because they actually made the decision to be all out. Now, I don't agree with them and I grieve for them and I pray for them because I'm like, you want all out because the world seems pleasing. But that's so temporary. That's so like little compared to eternity. This is eternity. And this is now. Even smaller. Eternity is so much bigger, so much longer than what we're living now. But you know, a lot of people, they don't want to get up. They want to stay in their situation because that's what they're used to. They don't want to do better because they don't know better. Amen. They don't think they could get out of their situation because they don't see the light on the other side of the tunnel. Um, They don't have hope because they're not surrounded by people who have the hope of Christ. Right. The hope of glory. Amen. In them. Holy Spirit filled Christians, believers. They haven't met us yet. They don't know about Christ. You think, oh, you live in America. Everybody should know about the Lord. Everybody should know about the gospel. Not true. I could guarantee you that from experience. Um, years ago, there, uh, there's a music fest that happens every single year in my area where I live. And I go to these festivals often when I have time. Now that I have two kids, it's harder. Um, but before the two kids uh, and during the two kids, really during the our first uh, seven-year-old when she was younger, two or three years old, we used to go out in the streets and witness face-to-face to people and ask them if they knew about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. These are American people. They're from different parts of the states. They all come. They say like close to a million people visit that 10-day window that the music fest is on. And you know, some people actually looked at me honestly and told me, no, they don't know about the gospel message. They haven't heard about Jesus being crucified. American people. So don't think that everybody in America knows about the gospel. It's not true. A lot of them are not even paying attention. A lot of them don't care. A lot of them are into other stuff like evolution and stuff. And they didn't, and they never they never took the time to get to know the Jesus of the scriptures. They never got to get they never made the time to try to understand the gospel. So not everybody knows the gospel in America. And people will tell you the truth and they will say, Listen, um, we never heard that. It's absurd. It's crazy. How could a man die and come back to life? So they try to rationalize everything. They try to get what we're getting. Like when God tells us to get up, they're trying to tell us to sit down. When God says, don't be afraid, they're trying to put fear in us. When God says, you know, you think you guys are smart, you know, God is making them look foolish. And he'll make us look foolish if we're not bold, if we don't go with what God is speaking. We don't go with what God is saying. He said, for see, today I have made you strong. Today you are made strong. If you forgot about the strength that's in you, if you forgot about the Holy Spirit God that's in you, if you're a believer, remind yourself that you're not an ordinary person walking around in an ordinary life. God has made you, has made us extraordinary people living extraordinary lives because we have the extraordinary God living within us, inside of us, working salvation out. Amen. Because, you know, when we get saved, it's an inside job and it's working that salvation out. Amen. Christ in us, the hope of glory, Holy Spirit, God, the hope of glory in every single walking sanctuary, every single walking temple of God, amen, causes us to ooze out the goodness of God. Uh, A lot of people say, and I agree, there's nothing really good about me, but the good is in me, amen, and he's the hope of glory. He is the great I am. He's the great physician. He's the prince of peace. He's the God of war. He's also the God sovereign who's in control of everything that happens. It might look out of control in your life right now. It might look like you're losing the battle. It might look like you have no chance. It might look like the enemies overcome your life. It may look that way. But if you read the scriptures and believe the scriptures, that's not true. It's a lie of the enemy. The enemy is always going to try to contradict what the word of God says. He might even approach you with something that seems true. Who just work on our emotions, work on our emotions, work on our emotions over and over again. And after a while, if we allow him to keep on giving us these emotional feelings, emotional feelings, we'll probably bite the bullet. We'll probably get into that lie and try to live it out. Not understanding that God has a greater plan, that what God spoke over our lives is true. Every single promise is yea and amen. God is in our corner. So we are strong, stronger than what you realize, stronger than what you think. Amen. You are built to last. Amen. We we have we have eternity in front of us. Amen. 
And we're living in temporary time with an eternal promise. Think about that. So what we do today really will um, trigger what's going to happen tomorrow. Good morning, Sister Joyce. God bless you. Good morning. Welcome to the Morning Devo. Sister Liz, God bless you. It's good to see you. God bless and happy Friday. With some people, it becomes close to impossible when a person has the love and godly support surrounding them and still can't take the step to get help. But with God, we can still have hope in our impossible situations. Absolutely. And the Bible says hope never disappoints. The Bible tells us over and over again that God will not turn away anybody who comes to him. Thank you so much for your comment, Sister Liz. Amen. Right on point. Amen. Listen, God is always on point. There's never been a time. I might come to the scripture on days and be like looking at the scripture like with four or five, six eyes and two heads trying to understand what I just read or what God is trying to say. I might not understand everything that God is saying at the time that he says it, but I do trust his word to be true. There's a difference. Amen. If I don't understand something, a lot of people, if they don't understand something, they're afraid of it and they run from it. I don't understand this. I don't understand the scripture. I don't understand God's love. I don't understand that. So I don't want no parts of it. I'm opposite. Even if I don't understand the word, amen, I'll trust it and I'll draw close to it. Because I know God's word is what saved me. God's word is what got me out of my situation in the past. And he continues to break me free from situations in the present. He could do the same for you. If God did it for me, I have no doubt that he could do something for you right now in your situation, in your condition, your position. You need help? Ask God. And you need strength? God gave it to you already. Amen. You just have to know that you are strong. Amen. And when God says you are strong, he said fortified, um, like uh, what he said, like a fortified city that cannot be captured. Amen. Not being captured means you are free. If you can't be captured, that means you are free. That's good news, right? Oh, man, I have this a drug addiction. Well, come on. Come on over to the freedom of Christ. Amen. The God's freedom. And you cannot be captured by that. Addiction again. Oh, I have a sexual addiction. I'm addicted to porn. Come on over to the freedom. Amen. And find your strength in God. And that pornography addiction will not be able to capture you anymore. See how that works? Now, when you find out, that's why the enemy's fighting. He doesn't want you to hear these morning devos. He don't want you to hear about the gospel. He doesn't want you to hear God's word. He doesn't want you to speak God's word. Oh, my man. He definitely doesn't want to speak. He doesn't want you and I to speak God's word of our own situation because then he loses, loses, loses. He's already a loser. But if he has your attention, if he has you focus on other things other than God, then he could capture you. Imagine imagine that. Free Christians walking around captive. Doesn't make any sense, right? I'm free in Christ, yet I'm, I'm bondage to sin? No, it can't be. That means that I'm being distracted. You're being distracted if that's the case by the enemy. By the sin, uh, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, right? And the devil and the world system. Those things were designed, right, to distract us. But when we stay focused on the one who created us, when we stay focused on the one who spoke through the prophets, when we stay focused on the word of God over and in our lives, enemy has no chance. That's why, that's why the enemy hates God's creation. Because he knows as soon as God's creation looks at the creator... Nobody's going to be caring about him. Nobody's going to be paying attention to him. Nobody's going to be listening to his lies. And the devil, to me, the devil is the loneliest person ever in the whole entire, loneliest spiritual being ever. Amen? He doesn't have any friends. doesn't have truth in him. He hates the truth. He's a liar. All he wants to do is kill, steal, and destroy. So he has anger and wrath always in his heart. He doesn't have any peace. He doesn't have any um, chance of salvation. He has no chance of redemption. He's already defeated. So well, why wouldn't he be angry? He just hates and hates and hates and hates. But God's people, we love and love and love. And when the hate of our soul comes, we know who he is. So therefore, we shouldn't trust him. We shouldn't have a conversation with him. We shouldn't believe his lies that we are not strong. We should believe God when God says we are strong. Amen. They will fight you, the Bible says, through Jeremiah, the prophet. They will fight you, but they will fail. Yes. How many people know that we're in a spiritual warfare and sometimes it's real, real painful. 
The struggle is real, right? And the fight is on. But we're not going to back up. We're not going to back down. And if you feel all alone, that's the time we need to call a brother or a sister in the Lord and pray. Ask for fellowship. Be strategic. If you feel lonely, that means it's time for you to fellowship. Because we're not doing this all by ourselves. Or just me and God, that's enough. Um, God will not teach that. God never ta- taught us that. It was just us and him. He spoke about what he did for us, what he demonstrated for us, what we have, who we have, who we serve, and he wants us to be the same with our neighbors and with our brothers and sisters in Christ. God loves us, um, and he died and showed that he loved us, and he rose again, and he's still alive, and he promises to come back. But we're eagerly waiting for the return of our King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and in the meantime, we need to be together on this. Amen? Can you imagine two or three people praying and agreeing on something that seems impossible in somebody else's life? Amen. And then it comes to pass when people see that the word of God is working in two to three people, three, four, five, six million people will grab onto that. Amen. And imagine we all pray about the same thing all around the world. You think that thing's going to stand that's against God? No, it won't. Amen. So let's get together. Let's find out our strength. Let's know that we are made strong. God made us strong. We are strong. Amen. And we need God to fight for us daily. And he does does it. Amen. So I'm out of time. I bless you all in the name of the Lord. Go to Jeremiah chapter one today and read the whole chapter for yourself to find out where God has placed you on this earth and how much strength he has given us. So I bless you all. Have a great weekend. I thank you for hanging out with me for this morning, Devo. God bless you. God keep you. And remember always that God is good. Peace.